Well, some of these players are hitting particularly well, so we'll talk about the waiver wire picker pickups that you may be able to find some value on. Um, and I'm going to start with Gavin Sheets. Mm-hmm. And yes, a Chicago White Sox. I have a couple of Chicago White Sox as they keep losing, <laughs> but their offense is picking up a little bit. Gavin Sheets, have you seen what he's up to the last week? Uh, 375 average, two home runs, six RBIs, five runs scored. And he's available in 95% of Yahoo leagues. You might find yourself an outfielder who could play first base too. I think it's a good one. I think Gavin Sheets is legit. I mean, he's got power and um, it's just the sucks for the White Sox. But um, my first waiver wire guy is um, our, our Twitter account has been blowing this guy up. But I just want to mention him because if you haven't picked him up yet, you absolutely should um, ride him while he's hot. Helio Ramos for the San Francisco mm. Giants. Um, he I, has I had him written down one, two, three, four home runs in the past 10 games, as well as one, two, three, four, five, six multi hit games in the last 10 games. That's just ridiculous. So he should be on, he should be rostered in every league regardless and ride him while he's hot. I don't anticipate it, anticipate it keeping up, but, um, this is, this is fantasy baseball, ride it. Yep. I got another one for you. He was 0 for 4 today, but prior to that, this week, 417 on base, three home runs, seven RBIs, and four runs scored. And that is Wilmer Flores of the San Francisco Giants, also corner infielder, only rostered in 4% of Yahoo League. So uh, might be a guy to look at as his season started slow, but he seems to be picking up. So Wilmer Flores, another guy uh, to potentially roster. I have um, two more, actually, that I just want to mention. One is uh, Hurston Waldrip. Pitcher for the Atlanta Braves came up. I, I picked him up today. I started him today. I was disappointed oh, that, today. Yeah, that, uh, <laughs> I, I'm going to let it slide. Uh, I, you know, I'm going to that get inning slide. lingered and there were some tough calls and he just couldn't find his way out of it. And then the bullpen really blew. Yeah. They blew it open against the bullpen. The Nationals did. So, you know, it wasn't all on him. I watched most of the start. One of the things that I hate MLB big inning is like the greatest concept. It's it's supposed to be like um like red zone right and so it could be perfect it could be incredible and yet they are so bad at it like i haven't seen people take like such a great idea and foobar it so much but then again it's baseball so i expect it but like they my point is (laughs) that with uh with mlb beginning they leave that game as it's going to a pitching change with the bases loaded only one run in so far in the inning. So the damage hasn't been fully done yet, or no, there was only, there's three runs in already in the inning. Cause I think they scored seven in the inning total damage, not full, fully done, right? Three runs in and they never come back after the pitching change. They never come back to that game. Like it's a close game. It was a one run game and they never came back to, don't you want to see if he's going to get, if the bullpen's going to come in and get the last out or if the nationals can break it open with the bases look, they never came back to it. Like that is just ter- whoever's like producing that. They just need to do a better job of just everything. And like, they'll go to random games. They also, you talk about the fly balls. Anytime there's like a deep fly ball, they quickly jump to that game. And it's like, Oh, it's an out. And then they stay on that game for like 20 seconds too long. It's like, Oh, we just jumped to this game. So we need to stay uh, again. I'm not saying it's an easy thing. It's baseball. It's different than football and red zone, whatever. I get that. But they red zone, I think has continuous continually evolved. I think they need to do a much better job with MLB beginning. Cause it could be really, really good. Like on a Sunday today, when I was just sitting at home, like I could have just watched six hours of it straight. And also that's also part of the problem. They start at like 3 PM. Why are you starting late? Start at 1 PM. The game start at one. Anyway, you, you could go out and golf on a Sunday. I, I would love to. I also just realized we were flipped. Um, that's fine. My, my last waiver wire pickup, I'm just a guy that, that's what, <laughs> I said I'm Rami. That's Vince. Um, is a guy who just got called back up, Joey Loperfito, um, for the Houston wow, Astros. So it is kind of weird, right? They called him up on I want to say it was Friday, and he has not played in any of the games since he's been called up. Which, okay, weird, whatever. He's up for Cal Tucker while he's injured. But the reason why I think he's a good pickup, the fact that he hasn't played, doesn't necessarily scare me right now because they're rolling out. Chas McCormick, who's hitting 200, and they're rolling out Trey Cabbage, who like Trey Cabbage, but Joey Loperfito is better than these guys, and I just don't know how much rope they're going to give Chaz, Chaz in particular, but um, I, I would just be shocked if they didn't start trying to get his bat into the lineup a little bit more. Um, so Joey Loperfito is a guy that I'm trying to pick up everywhere. 
um, for that reason, because I just I think over the next month or so, his playing time is going to start falling into place.